Hello, this is Nation Beat. I am General Norville bringing you this brief on the pulse of our nation and highlights around the heart of St. Lucia. The Roots and Soul Festival sets the stage for cultural exchange with the motherland. Farmers are trained to defend the nation against climate change. St. Lucia joins the international community in raising awareness for suicide prevention and Creole Heritage Month is launched with a difference. The curtains came down on the Roots and Soul Festival on Sunday as part of St. Lucia Solai Summer Festivals. The event proved an art platform for cultural and heritage exchange between St. Lucia and Nigeria. More on that motherland connection in a moment. First, a look at the highlights of the second installment of Roots and Soul with Anisia Antoine. The three-day event kicked off at the Royalton St. Lucia Resort and Spa on Friday, August 31st, 2018 and continued with the two main stage events at the Pigeon Island National Landmark on September 1st and 2nd, 2018. The Roots and Soul Festival featured a variety of musicians such as Afropunk artist Yemi Alade, dancehall artist Biniman, and concluded with international R&B artists Ja Rule and Ashanti. It's beautiful, wonderful vibe. I love the, the, the energy of the people. They, they, they come out to, to, to see a good show. You know? And um, you know, last night I was here and I could, I could feel the energy and I could see you know, what I needed to do on stage tonight. You know, and um, I must say, beautiful crowd. You know, I wasn't expecting this. You know, um, so I just want to big up to the organizers for inviting us um, and give us an, um, give, giving us an opportunity like this. It's huge. You know, we're, we're sharing stage with international stars. You know, and um, it's just amazing. Our gift. The Roots and Soul Festival in its second year is increasingly providing spin-off benefits to local providers. According to the Public Relations Officer of the Events Company of St. Lucia, the event has shown increased growth from last year. The Events Company of St. Lucia, naturally, um, this is a, a huge portfolio that we have. Uh, we take the responsibility very seriously, um, producing our national events. And, and we have many stakeholders that we have to satisfy. So we're planning, we've been in planning now for, for a couple of years. Because the moment we, you know, we were almost planning year one and year two at the same time. So to see it roll out, to see it materialize and to see it be successful. I mean, look at how many people are here. People are enjoying themselves. We're getting um, congratulatory messages coming through. We have international press here. We have local media. Um, and we have to say we value our local media because we Without our local media, the information wouldn't get out initially. We have our partners at the St. Lucia Tourism Authority who are working closely with us as well in the regional and international markets to promote the Soleil St. Lucia Summer Festival, which is the total package. With the growing international interest each year, the events company of St. Lucia is expecting an even bigger and better event in the years to come. The St. Lucia Soleil Summer Festival 2018 will conclude in October with the St. Lucia's Art and Heritage Month, a celebration of the richness and diversity of St. Lucia's cultural, ethnic and artistic heritage. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Meantime, the events company of St. Lucia has embarked on a new initiative geared at enhancing the Soleil St. Lucia Summer Festival events catalogue. The first is expected to take the form of events and programs tailored to foster the exchange of talents, culture and knowledge with a view of availing nationals to a broader scope of the creative arts. Nigerian singer, songwriter and performer Yemi Aladin is described as a force to be reckoned with. The artist who graced the stage at St. Lucia's Summer Festival 2018, Roots and Soul, partook in a cultural exchange hosted by the events company of St. Lucia. 
The event Nigeria meets St. Lucia forms part of the events company of St. Lucia's goal to bring added value to the Soleil St. Lucia Summer Festival events catalog. This it intends to do by developing ancillary events that seek to engender deeper, more meaningful relationships between the artists brought in to perform at the various events and St. Lucia for local groups of various demographics and psychographics. Aladid highlighted the importance of education in obtaining one's goals and the power of music. I must give the kudos to my mom to be sincere. Being able to finish school, follow through my educational aspirations and still have a career, grow a career as I, as I moved on in life, as I grew older, I'll give that to my mom because she said, girl, do whatever you want to do, but just make sure you come home with my grades. If your grades are not correct, me and you will enter one trouser. Have you seen two people wearing one trouser before? <laughs> you, you don't want to see that, especially not with my mom. You know, so I had to make sure that I came correct with that. And I think she also, with that warning, she also taught me how to, um, in anything I involved myself in, she taught me to make sure that I came out doing my best. The Minister for Culture and Local Government, the Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose, explained that the groups to benefit include marginalized youth, students, young women, local musicians of different ages and others. The primary objective is to facilitate an exchange of skill, knowledge and culture with a view of exposing nationals to a wider scope for the creative arts. That's what we want and that's the kind of exchange. That is what this exchange is all about. Getting them to understand that Yemi has achieved that level of success, how did she do it? Parental support, guidance from her mother, you understand, listening, obeying, you understand, and staying focused. Simple ingredients. And it's not different to the advice that our parents give us, but it's how well we apply what we have taught and the lessons that we learn that will lead us, you understand, to be the stage masters and the successful people um, in our society. The exchange also served as a teaser to the main event of which the organizers were confident would be a hit. And the cultural exchange Nigeria meets St. Lucia appears to have borne fruit. National talent has been identified for potential roles in the creative industry. The cultural exchange appeared to have borne immediate fruit. Nigerian singer, songwriter and performer Yemi Alade was so impressed with the performance of two St. Lucian nationals that she agreed to have them perform with her. The two young men were performing one of the artist's songs when she got up and joined them. I think we can have something going because they did it so perfectly well. Please guys, a round of applause for them. They were amazing. To sing my music, to sing it that way, he tried with the accent, he said the, you know, the, the English that we speak, the pigeon English we have over there as well. He did an amazing job. That takes a lot of time and you invested that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Chief Executive Officer of the Events Company of St. Lucia, Thomas Leos, highlighted St. Lucia's growing interest in African entertainment, including film and music. He opined that due to St. Lucia's heritage, its appetite for varying genres throughout the world is quite healthy. What has also helped, I think, I think along that way, um, I don't know how long ago it was, but this, um, this TV station that started playing a lot of African movies. And a lot of St. Lucians, and I think from Nigeria, it's Nollywood, right? They call it? Yeah. So you have Hollywood in California, you have Bollywood in India, and you have Nollywood in Nigeria. <laughs> and that really... Um, fired up um, St. Lucia's appetite, not only for, um, for um, Nigerian films, but also Nigerian music. Um, and I want to say Nigeria because sometimes we tend to lump Africa as one big country, but it's a lot of separate countries, so I want to focus on that. So I'm sure some of you remember movies like Mr. Ibu and, and, and these names, right? Remember that? Yeah. So it's really, it thrills us that you're able to take this long journey. To date, the events company of St. Lucia has embarked on three such events, strategically executed to enhance the value of Soleil St. Lucia's summer festival. These include Breakfast with Brandon, which was held during the Country and Blues Festival 2017, and Jazz Mexicano held during the St. Lucia Jazz Festival 2018. Jazz Mexicano featured a series of workshops which was held in collaboration with the Mexican Embassy. Another was Karen with Caroline, which featured Caroline Malikai for the St. Lucia Jazz Festival 2018. St. Lucia will join the rest of the world in observing World Suicide Prevention Day on September 10, 2018. Miguel Morissette reports. 
The World Health Organization estimates that over 800,000 people die by suicide each year. That's one person every 40 seconds. World Suicide Prevention Day is held every year to raise awareness and work towards the common goal of preventing suicide. As part of this observance, St. Lucia National Mental Wellness Center will play its part by hosting several activities. We have a number of initiatives planned from the 3rd to the 7th of September on the ground floor of the Ministry of Health. There will be a table where persons can come and be screened for different mental health conditions, be screened for the level of suicidal thoughts that they're having, if they're having any, and if they do have some distress from those questionnaires, they can be referred to the, to the adequate agency. On the 9th of September, we will be having a church service at the Bethel Tabernacle at, at 10 a.m., where persons can attend. We are especially inviting persons, families of persons who have been bereaved by suicide to attend and to share with us on this important day. On Monday the 10th, from 10 a.m., there will be a mental health fair at Constitution Park, where persons again can come to be screened for different mental health conditions, receive information on suicide and suicide prevention, and as well as information on the National Helpline and how that can be assessed, um, accessed. On the night of, the, of September 10th, we are encouraging persons to light a candle near a window at 8 p.m. in observance of World Suicide Prevention Day, and, and by doing that, they will be showing support for persons who have been bereaved by suicide, as well as showing support for suicide prevention around the world. Gilead said there is help for persons who see suicide as a viable option to their problems. We would like persons to know that the National Helpline is available 24 hours a day. Persons can call from any phone. The call is free. The number is 203 and there are always persons there waiting to assist with persons who are having difficult times and who may see suicide as a viable option. The callers will be transferred or will be referred to persons who can assist them to, to get through those difficult times so that the suicidal thoughts, which can be distressing, can be dealt with. The 2018 theme for Suicide Prevention Day is Working Together to Prevent Suicide. From the Communication Unit in the Ministry of Health, Miguel Morissette reporting. This is Nation Beat. Still to come, the many ways to enjoy the mango fruit. I am a woman who demands to be respected. I am a man who respects women. I am a woman who won't apologize for my accomplishments. I am a man who celebrates the successes of women. I am a woman who knows that this mind and body are mine. I am a man who values a woman's body and mind. I am a woman who is not asking for it. I am a man that stands up and speaks out. I am a girl who will not live in fear. I am a boy who does not intimidate. I am a girl who refuses to accept discrimination. I am a boy who treats everyone equally. I am a girl who respects myself. I am a boy who respects myself. I am a girl with a voice. So next time a woman is victimized, remember, I am a woman, a man, a girl, a boy, who stands up, who are you? Worldwide, one person dies by suicide every 40 seconds.
to success by organizers and patrons alike. Geraldine B. said Joseph reports that the idea behind the event was not only to highlight the diverse uses of the fruit, but to detail the climate change project implemented by the government of St. Lucia centered around the plant. The 2018 Mango Festival was a family-focused event that introduced those who attended to an array of ideas concentrated around the many ways in which the fruit of the mango plant can be used. Information on hand also gave insight into the project implemented by the Government of St. Lucia by way of the Forestry Division of the Ministry of Agriculture and the Global Climate Change Alliance, OECS, where farmers are engaged in mango planting techniques that aid in soil conservation. The Forestry Department is the implementing agency. Okay. So they're supervising the planting of about 6,000 mangoes mm -hmm. in various vulnerable areas. So certain areas were selected, especially vulnerable watersheds. The plant is very beneficial in stabilizing slopes and rivers because of its deep taproot system. Mm -hmm. So it has been found for studies that it is very good at withstanding strong winds and heavy water flows in the river. So it's very good at stabilizing the river banks and, and the slopes. The educational officer went on to say that the festival was only one of the ventures held as a means as an outlet for the farmer's wares, as links to processes have been made to ensure economic gain for the agriculturalists. Mm -hmm. So now we have all this fruit, what do we do with it? Huh. Okay, we need to, so farmers are now liaising with processors through the Ministry of Agriculture for processing of mangoes, so they'll have a place to sell their mangoes. And further avenues are, look at, are being looked at for exportation of these mangoes. Mm -hmm. they'll, not, they'll not just have mangoes on their land and all that fruit, nothing to do. Yes, it stabilizes the soil, yes, it increases soil fertility. Um, it does all of that, but they also want to see the economic benefit, mm -hmm. and that is also part of the project and where they have that kind of synergy and connection. Organizers have stated that plans for the hosting of a follow up event are in the pipeline. For the Government Information Service, I am Jolin B. St. Joseph reporting. The Monsignor Patrick Anthony Folk Research Center has launched the calendar of events for the highly anticipated Creole Heritage Month. Major changes to the annual celebration have been announced with a concerted effort towards decentralizing the flagship event, Jeune Creole. More from Jacques Hinson Compton. The Folk Research Center, or FRC, unveiled plans to completely overhaul Creole Heritage Month 2018 in a recent press briefing. The theme for Creole Heritage Month 2018 is Découvert Saint-Lucie, Découvert Cow, Discover St. Lucia, Discover Yourself. With three decades of experience and feedback from the people of St. Lucia on Junior Coil experience, this year, the Folk Research Center is attempting a new approach based on discovering different parts of our country with their rich natural and cultural heritage, community participation for select events, culminating in the grand national celebration of St. Lucian creativity on June Creole, October 20th. According to the FRC chairman, specific events were selected for the communities of Soufre, Choiselle, Bellevue, Monrepo, Vieux and Marsha. Events coordinator at the FRC, George Fish Alphonse, passionately highlighted the importance of celebrating the island's rich cultural heritage and history. Mama Lady Quick, once 34 years ago, someone asked, FRC, what you celebrating? Culture. What culture? Monsieur Anthony, quelle zoom, quelle bravo. What you celebrating? Qui ça ou ka celebre? Fish, répond ça. What we celebrating? Lucianness, our nation. Nous ka découvrir cette lycée. All its tropical splendor, flora and fauna. C'est ça nous ka celebre. That we celebrating. Our heritage, Creole language, la vie Creole, Lucian cuisine. Fit veket la mori, bouillon, farine ex avocat, di te kako. That we celebrating. Choisey, crafters, potters, se sanuka celebre. Our icons, our people, fiel mo, me makume pa fini. 
nous ca célébrer des fêtes ces scènes Florita, Liza, Morhol, Frank, Adli, Doudou, Lenads, Labord, Wowo, Ives, Derrick, Roddy, Saint Thomas, Harold Simmons, Coco Charles, John Charles, John Compton. C'est ça nous ca célébrer. That we celebrating. Director of Events and Production at the CDF, Drinia Frederick, says her organization is responsible for three components of Heritage Month, the Icon Series, the La Marguerite Festival, and the Creole Market. This year for the Icon Series, the icon which is chosen a year in advance is Ramo Polio. And it is string, song, and dance. And our rationale for doing that it's really a celebration of worthy individuals who have made a significant contribution to arts and culture in St. Lucia. Um, it is to also highlight excellence as part of our cultural and historical footprint that marks the achievement of our people. One of the key points to be taken from the press briefing is that Creole Heritage Month 2018 will be more decentralized. From the Government Information Service, I am Jacques Kingston Compton. In more cultural developments, the Lawards Festival was in full bloom at the end of August as the celebration of the rose culminated in Monrepo. Here's Chef Roy Marius with the details. The Feast of La Rose is one of two rival floral festivals of St. Lucia. On Wednesday, the celebration commenced with a church service at the Monrepo Catholic Church and was followed by a march to the Monrepo Primary School. For us as a ministry, we're very happy with what we saw today. A number of young people, a number of young chantwells coming out of the various communities. And um, that's what we need to continue to build on and work with um, the Cultural Development Foundation in trying to ensure that we, we build on what we have. Um, as you know, this is our culture, this is who we are. And so the important thing for us is to continue to provide the support to enable it to flourish, you understand, and grow in the way that it, that it ought to. So we're quite happy to be here and we're happy to see the number of groups, 10 groups from around the country participating. It can be bigger, but there's work to be done in terms of mobilizing and ensuring that all communities um, are part of this. The festival attracted groups from Blusher, Bellevue, Labry, Denry, Castries, Viewfort, Moshi, and Deriso. The costumes featured military and professional wear, including judges, policemen, nurses, doctors, and soldiers. The Feast of La Rose is celebrated on August 30th every year. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Empowerment, Youth Development, Sports, Culture, and the Local Government, I am Chevroy Marius. And that's how we end the premiere edition of Nation Beat. Until next time, I am Janelle Norville.